All right, we're back in studio today, episode number two, Elite Athlete Interview. Today I have number 15, Angel Montero, first team, all district wide receiver. Angel, how you been? I've been all right, uh, hanging out with the family, you know, uh, playing basketball, you know. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because that was actually going to be my very first question. Um, you know, as far as football specific activities go, how is your offseason going? Offseason is pretty good. Well, I'm not in the offseason. I'm hanging out with football, working out with football. I'm actually playing basketball right now. Okay. Um, I would say it's pretty fun, you know. Um, Keeps me in shape, I would say. That, you know, uh, there's there's a, a whole lot of cardio in basketball, so I, I'm sure a lot of that translates over to football, football and yes, just sir. keeping in good shape for you yeah. know, your endurance. Cause, all right, well, good, man. I'm, I'm glad glad that you're staying active and mm -hmm. prepping yourself the best you can. Yes, sir. Um, how surprised were you? When they announced you made first team all district, um, I was honestly kind of speechless. I, I didn't think I thought people were just toying with me at first. Yeah, like, oh, you made first team, and I was like, nah, you know, I don't think so because I didn't have a picture yet. You know, yeah, I, I didn't. It was just students coming up to me until one of the coaches finally came up to me in the hallways and was like, hey, you know, congratulations, you made first team. And I even looked at them kind of weird, like, what? No way, for real? I was like shocked about it. Well, I mean, th to to say that this season was a breakout season for you is an understatement. I mean. Being on that sideline, it was like you had so many like long bomb plays. Like it was, it was very exciting to watch. Um, it was, it was almost like you didn't know when it was coming, but you knew it was coming. Like yeah. it, there was going to be at least one a game where Angel was breaking loose. Like, yeah. Um, you know, and then um, you know to follow up on that question, like how do you build on that? Like what since you've already you've already made you know first team all district. You know, next, how do you build on that going into next season? Like, what, what goals are you going to stack on top of that? Well, next season, my goal is to make MVP. I want to get MVP for, you know, the district. You know, I want to nice. win the MVP instead of first team. First team is all good, but you, know, you always got to reach up for higher. Okay. So I want to, you know, I want to even want to break the, uh, I want to even break my own record I did this year. So you do know? you know your stats? What were, what were your numbers for this year? I think this year I had about 700 yards, I think four touchdowns. Nice. I'm not sure. I forgot about many catches, but I think that's all I kind of remember. You know, um, you and Robert Lovers had a natural, like, on-field chemistry. Yes, like, you, you could tell that you were his safety net. Like, it yes, didn't sir. matter if you were shallow, mid, or deep. You were his go-to. Um, how, how early into the season or preseason did you guys know that y'all were going to have something special like that? Um, I probably want to say 7-on-7. Seven you know, because at first we had Roe, and me and Roe were pretty good. And um, and then once he left, you know, me and Robert started kind of throwing, throwing the ball around after school a little bit, running some routes. And then uh, he, he started to get the feel for me, and I started to get the feel for him. So then I guess once we actually started practicing stuff, it just got better from there. Yeah. Well, you two are definitely exciting to watch. Uh, you know, he, he would never give up on a play. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, he, he had great mobility, being able to es escape the, the yes, pressure. Sir. And if he made it out on that on that right side, you knew that ball was going to Montero. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, okay, so this season is going to have a change at quarterback and head coach. What are some of the things mentally and physically that you can do as an individual to maintain the level of success that you had last year and, and build upon it? Yeah. Um, well, I know the QB situation is going to be kind of hard because I don't think we found one yet. Okay. But I think other than that, the head coach, um, I'm going to have to work, you know, keep on working, show them that, you know, why I made first team, you know, instead of having all the other coaches just talk good about me and then me going out there being lazy. Right. And so I think that's what I have to do mentally, you know, physically. Mentally, I would have to get ready for him, you know, for his new coaching, new yeah. play style because you never know what he's going to throw at you. So physically, uh, honestly, just keep it up, you know, work in. Uh, you know, helping teammates out, teammates helping me out. I think that's really just what's best because you can't really do nothing alone. Right. It's definitely a team sport, that's for sure. Yes, sir. Um, let me see. Uh, are there any players – this is kind of a two-part question. You know, you were kind of on this trajectory. I've been watching you play since seventh or eighth grade. You've yes, always sir. had you've always had this breakout ability. Um, you know, from your freshman year – on did were there any older wildcats that kind of mentored you a little bit like did you ever get the chance to work a little bit with players like james Muir and stuff like that to kind of help help your development along yes sir um i remember in eighth grade uh harrison k 
came up to my dad one time and was like, hey, your boy's really good. You know, he comes to the ball when it's done him. I would like to throw little routes and stuff like that. So I guess I kind of had a little chemistry uh, with Harrison before I even started playing with them. And then nice. I think once I got into high school and I started messing with James and uh, heck, I even kind of looked up to Kobe uh, Frazier sometimes. Uh, I remember watching him when I was a junior high and I was like, yeah, he's pretty good. You know, I want to be like him, you know. Nice. Um, um, I want to say James probably once I got up there, he really helped me out get shifty, crafty with my uh, releases and breaks and all that extra stuff. Um, probably, uh, uh, yeah, probably James and uh, I'm trying to think of somebody else. Maybe J-Dub. Yeah. J-Dub's a really, yeah. real good inspiration for me. He always told me to keep my head up no matter what. He was always motivating me to do better, pushing me to uh, you know, yeah. be more than what I could have been. Yeah. That's that's awesome to hear. Uh, you know, now that you're an upperclassman, like do you are you gonna go out of your way to try to help, you know, the the ones coming coming up from, you know, the freshman class moving up who might have a shot at moving into varsity or might need a little bit of, you know, mentoring in their in their J V uh, seasons. Yes, sir. Uh, most likely, um, because I mean it's the next generation, it's the next football team. So once I leave they're gonna be there. So I don't, you know, why not get them good for next season, you know, help the team out in the long run, you know, get them good, uh, you know, help the team out. Because um, I know a lot of kids look up to me and it's, it's, you know, it feels good that kids look up to me. So yeah. now I use that, you know, to help them out so they can even get good too. So they can have little kids look, look up to them. That's awesome. Um, are there any NFL players that you, you, you admired as a kid or you kind of, uh, you try to emulate with your, your playing style just a little bit. Um, when I was a kid, I used to watch D hop. Yeah. Um, I, I know he wasn't really the fastest or the shiftiest, but I, I wanted to have hands just like him. I wanted to catch anything. Like if, if I could touch, it, I wanted to catch it. Yeah. Um, recently I've been starting to look at, um, uh, uh, what's his name? I forgot. Um, Stefan Diggs. I like how, I like the way, he, um, runs his routes. He's real shifty. You never know what his next move is. Right. And uh, he knows how to, you know, work the DV. He knows how to make the DB think you're going one way, then go the other. Same as Tank Dell. I like the way Tank Dell is shifty off his release. Extremely releases. shifty. Extremely. Um, I like his field vision. He has real good field vision. You know, he uh, he could be running and then spin move off of you, and you not even know it. Yeah. And I I like that field vision. So I'm trying to work on, you know, being able to look at the field more, uh, being more shifty and more crafty with my work. I think that's going to go a long way. It's going to go a long way, definitely, for sure. Um, what are your college goals after high school? Do you have, uh, like, a short list of your, your dream colleges that you would love to start getting letters from this season? Um, I would want to start getting letters from uh, U of H. I really like U of H. Yeah. Um, let me see. You know, all the top schools, you know, everybody wants to be a D1 athlete. You know, get all the letters from top schools and all that. But honestly... Um, if I go D2 or D3 and work my way up, I mean, I would be okay with me, you know, still still being able to play football, even though if it's not on the top level, it still get me ready for the next level. And then if football doesn't work, you know, I'd probably be working the medical field. There you go. Yes, sir. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with D2, D3. There's, uh, you know, there, there's a growing trend nowadays of a lot of these D2, D3 athletes being drafted. Um and as far as U of H goes, they're they're building something special over there. Uh, yes, now that they've they've transitioned into the Big Twelve, uh, they're building a whole new culture over there, and I, I think you'd fit in great. I'm a little biased, but I think you'd <laughs> fit in great. Um, let me see here. If you didn't play wide receiver, what offensive position would you choose? Oh, not sure. Offensive position, probably like a skilled running back or something. You know, just. Have me run out outside. Once I hit the outside, then it's just speed from there. There you go. Uh, a little scat back, a little third down back. Yeah. So basically another form of wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So this this one's kind of like a, a, a tricky question. So you've always had big playability. That's what you're known for. Um, you know, you're a, a momentum builder. Uh, you get the sidelines amped. The, the, the stands go crazy. Anytime Montero goes for 50-plus, people go nuts. Um, has your game always naturally been that way, or did you evolve as a player into that? Um, I, I want to say I probably evolved into it because uh, I never really liked playing football. Football was never really my sport. Yeah. The only reason I played it is because my dad. I actually want to you know, probably give it to my dad. He's the reason why I make those big plays and stay calm in those big moments. 
because he's always you know always told me you know just whatever he's like just play football just have fun so that's yeah. what he's always told me keep a calm mind uh he said the more you stress out the more you think about it the more you're going to mess up so i've always kept a calm mind because of him um i want to say out my dad probably helped me out with that um anytime there was a big moment i messed up he always told me he was always work with me the next day and be like hey look this is what you did wrong let's yeah. fix it let's do this and this and that so you know i probably said my dad helped me out with that to grow into the to the guy I am now, the man I am now, um, to make those big abilities. And um, yeah, I'll probably just say I've involved into it, worked into it, yeah. you know, because little by little, you know, so ever since I was six, just kept on working with my dad. And then I guess he's the reason why I'm here now, you know, why I'm as good as I am today. That's awesome. That's a, really great to hear. Um, let's talk about the coaching staff. Our, what, what coach do you feel has helped you develop as an individual, like as a person and as a player the most? Like who's had the biggest impact on you, uh, your, your varsity years? Um, I probably want to say Coach Larkin and Coach Garza. They really helped me out. Coach Garza has always been there for me. Even when I do mess up, he's never yelling. He's never, you know, I think he's never just yelling at me or anything. He's always calm about it, talking to me about it. Then he, you know, helps me draw it up and be like, hey, maybe next time we should do this and that. Yeah. Always helping me out. Coach Larkin's the same. Uh, he's always been there for me, you know, helps me out, tells me, hey, when you run this route, maybe try this and this and that. You know, always helping me out with my game, making my game a lot better than what it is. Nice. Yes, sir. And, uh, Coach Larkin, he, he played uh, collegiate wide receiver, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's... He know he's definitely one to follow for sure. Yes, sir. And uh, Coach Garza, he's he's awesome all the way around. I, I love being around the entire staff. Um, love being around the team. Uh, you guys are extremely exciting to watch. Um, you know, I, I wish nothing but the best for you in this upcoming season. Yes, sir. Um, let's go get that MVP award. Yes, sir. Angel, thanks for coming on, bud. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Um, everybody. Uh, all the full interviews will be uploaded to my Facebook page. I'm also going to start a YouTube. Please uh, go on there, like, and subscribe. Uh, let's take this opportunity to get to know these players off the field. Um, like I said last episode, they're putting so much work day after day after day. It uh, doesn't matter if it's off season, preseason, whatever. Uh, they're out there earning it. Um, you know, so let's let's give them their dues and. Uh, Stay tuned. I have I have a lot more interviews lined up, and uh, thank y'all for y'all's time.